Hi, I'm Evan. I want to tell you a story about my unexpected inheritance from my grandfather. Agree. Everyone would like to suddenly receive someone's treasure spontaneously. Just like that, for no reason. So, this story happened to me about a year ago. I've always been considered a difficult teenager. My mother did not have time to go to school to see the principal. She was called almost every day. I didn't have a father. My mother divorced him a long time ago. And so she with my two brothers were left alone. Mom almost always worked and we were alone all the time. We lived in a poor neighborhood. There are a lot of people like us. There is a high crime rate in our area because everyone goes out of their way to survive. If suddenly we saw a stranger in our hood, he would never leave safe and sound. Only if he managed to escape. But the guys and I ran very well. Every time we saw a potential victim, we acted according to the same plan. We evaluated, examined, followed on tiptoes, surrounded and robbed. Most often, money and jewelry were given immediately, but there were also some stubborn ones who considered us children. Only they did not yet know how dangerous and capable we were. The prize was divided equally. More often, everything was spent on food and goods. Products are like soft drugs. We bought drugs and pushed it in clubs for rich kids, businessmen and government officials. These spoiled brats always had money, and they didn't mind spending at least a thousand in one evening. Sometimes we used it ourselves to get away from reality for a while. I hated these spoiled kids and their parents. I always wanted to beat them up and could hardly control myself. Once, when I was pushing another batch of dope in the club, one of these elites stuck to me, took the back from me and said that he would add a hundred on top if I danced to him. I got furious from such impudence. I, of course, was engaged in dark affairs, but I was not going to be someone else's clown. I punched him in the face properly. He fell to the floor and blood splattered in his suit. Began to yell that I ruined the shirt that I was more expensive than my apartment. That I went up to him and pushed him again. The next day he found me. Came by a car with his daddy. As luck would have it, mom had a day off that day. When she opened the door, the rich were on the doorstep with the police. And she understood everything. Then there was a long dispute to somehow make amends for the situation. My mother suggested that I work out my guilt with physical labor. She promised the rich that I would come every day and clean their garden, pool, and walk the dogs. When I heard this, I started yelling. I had no intention of working for these ghouls. But my mother shut me up and the brat's dad agreed. The cops left. I was told to work for them all summer before starting school. Mom and I had a big fight that evening. But she said that she was ashamed of me and I got sick of it. The only thing that made me happy was that the kid didn't mention the drugs he bought from me. In short, the next day and I began my detention. I found the address quickly. At first, a gorgeous golden gate opened in front of me. I entered it with pre-issued pass, walked a kilometer and only then a mansion opened up in front of me. They had a, a large area with a lawn with all sorts of statues and a fountain. The servant immediately gave me the tools for work and showed me where the garden was and which dogs to walk. I hated my job, but I promised my mother that I would work honestly and still not be in prison. Three hours later, I finally finished cleaning the garden and went to the house for the dogs. There were two pugs. Shit, I said to myself. The rats in our area are bigger than these dogs. I wonder how much they cost. Each one is a thousand dollars. Someone suddenly said behind me. I even jumped from fear. An old grandfather was sitting in the back. He was in a wheelchair. He could walk, but I guess it was just easier to ride. He politely asked my name and then introduced himself. His name was Grandpa Aiden. As you may have guessed, he's the grandfather of the jerk I'm here for. We got into a conversation. For some reason, he did not look like all the other rich people. The grandfather looked like a simple man and he was the only one who apologized for his grandson's behavior. I was very surprised but he said that he knew perfectly well what he was. It's a pity that fate pushed you against him. Although, who knows, maybe it's not accidental, said the old man. He pushed, I put leashes on the dogs and went for a walk. When I returned an hour later, I saw that Aiden's grandpa was also sitting in an armchair and looking at the garden. I asked why he was alone and he said that he was too old for everyone and smiled. I suddenly felt a little sorry for him. I returned home and kept thinking about this old man. He seemed to be quite nice. I decided to entertain him found my m favorite music on the internet and the next day when i had finished with everything i put on my favorite songs to him he liked them a day later he was waiting for me with a pile of books i read his favorite books for him he mostly loved sci-fi which surprised me too since then every day we listened to music read books and ate together talked a lot i learned a lot about life about how he rose from the bottom in the business industry many years ago and bequeathed everything to his son 
who could not even raise his child properly. As soon as I wrote my will, they sat me down in a chair, hired a nurse, and didn't even come to me. Although we live in the same house, I may not see them for weeks, said Grandpa Aiden. I was terribly sorry for him. I promised that I would come to him every day and kept my word. Over time, we became good friends. I went to work in a good mood and returned there feeling even better. My mom noticed it. A month later, I was given a day off. I wanted to stay at home, but the guys from the hood rang the doorbell. They invited me to go hunting, which meant looking for rich people. I refused, saying that I was tired. They came again a week later. I refused again. Then one of the chiefs in the hood came to my house himself and said that if I didn't go out, then I would have problems. Again, I didn't listen. I don't know why, but I didn't want to do it anymore. My mother was glad to see me like this. She said that I had changed for the better. Rocky, the leader, promised that soon I would regret that I dumped them. While you're eating there among the rich, walking in their gardens, we continue to survive, he said. I didn't listen and then regretted it. Literally, a couple of days later, the cops came to our house again. They arrested me for selling drugs. Did you guess who started this? Mom was crying in the station. I was angry at Rocky. Suddenly, the next day, the sheriff came to me and opened the gate, and he said that he was letting me go on bail. I wondered who could have done this. Then I saw a familiar face, the driver of Aiden's grandfather. I immediately went to his house and thanked him for his help and began to make excuses saying that people set me up. The old man raised his hand and said that he knew, and then jokingly said that he was simply bored without me. Mom baked her signature apple pie as a token of gratitude, and I took it to him. The hood guys called me the garbage of the rich, but I didn't pay attention. Again, Aiden's grandfather always said that there are things and people unworthy of the most precious thing we have, time. So I listened to him. Rocky backed off for a while which I was honestly happy about. I didn't want more problems. My mother wouldn't bear it. The next time I came to detention, the old man began to ask about my life. I told him everything as it was. How at school all the kids were from poor families. We knew the value of money, time, and knew what hunger was. Mom worked constantly, and I couldn't get a job because I was underage. We didn't have enough money to pay the bills, to feed my siblings. I used to suppress hunger. Some days it was enough to just drink more water. Every evening when my mother came home, I heard her crying. The man listened attentively and said that if I wanted to change something in my life, I needed to quit crime. I told him that I had already started working on that. The same evening, when I returned home, I saw that the front door was open. My heart beat with fear. I ran into the house and saw that my mother was crying and my two little brothers were lying on the floor. They were unconscious. We immediately began to call the ambulance. They were saved. The doctor said they had drugs in their blood. I knew immediately who it was. With anger and tears coming to my eyes, I clenched my fists and ran to Rocky. He and the boys were just sitting in our house. I ran to him and started beating him with my fists, and he just laughed in my face. <laughs> the other guys separated us. I shouted at him, how could you? They are children. And he told me that he treated them to some ice cream with a surprise added some kind of drugs, and then said that if I went to the cops, he would drag me into this too. Rocky was shocked. He didn't think I would do it. My mother was crying. I asked her to forgiveness and said that I could not do it otherwise. We were taken into custody, but the next day a man came. He turned out to be a lawyer. Of course, Aiden's grandfather sent him. It was a long trial. It went on for about two, three months, but by some miracle, they managed to get me acquitted. I had a good lawyer. Rocky stayed in jail. I remember the day when I left the courtroom with a clear conscience. I managed to defeat my past self. I was as happy as my mother. The first thing I did was run to Aiden's grandfather, but my lawyer stopped me on the way. What he said came as a shock. Aiden's grandpa died of old age. He left you a will and asked to be silent about it. The inheritance is in another city so that his relatives don't find out about it. He also asked me to give you a letter, but the key, you'll need it said the lawyer. Tears rolled down my face. I could not believe it. I didn't even have time to say goodbye to him. We didn't finish books and didn't listen to my best playlist. When I calmed down, I came to his grave and said goodbye. I talked, left the unfinished book and a USB flash drive with her music. I thanked him for such a generous gift. Although he was not my grandfather, he appeared in my life for a reason. My mother and I went to that city. It turns out that there was a bank account in my name and a selkie. Aiden's grandfather left a huge amount of money for my mother and I to move out of that neighborhood, buy a new house, and live happily for the rest of our lives. Thank you, Evan, for brightening my last days. 
I believe you have become a good person. It's amazing that we met this way. Spend money buying a better life. Read all the books and do not forget about my dogs. I leave them to you, was written in the letter. And today, I'm walking in the park with the pugs, not far from the house that my mother and I bought. She found a better job and now spends most of her time with us. Thank you, my old man. If you liked the video, then press the like button and leave us comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.